As we look into the message this morning, the title of the sermon is Breath Came Into Them. I've gone back to the Old Testament, found another passage about wind, about the wind. And in this season about the Holy Spirit, the wind is a key word or a cue word about the Holy Spirit. We know on the day of Pentecost, a mighty rushing wind or something like a mighty rushing wind filled the upper room. Again, it's hard to explain the Holy Spirit, but you can sense when He is convicting you of sin or when He is giving you a peace about a situation. I hope this thing holds up. If not, we'll change mics. Um, you can tell when He is working in you and when you're obeying God. Buddy, is that me? Or... Can you just turn? In. How's that? We'll see how that does. I'll tell you some stories later on about little technical things that don't line up and how that can affect you. Um, the wind, a key word. Now you may not have connected the bones vision in Ezekiel with Pentecost, but they are connected. I'm going to read verses 1 to 10 in a moment, but I will finish the message with verse 14 which talks about God pouring out His Spirit on all flesh. So if you'll stand, let me read from Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 10. Ezekiel is a prophet in Babylon at the time of the exile. Israel is, is very scattered, very hopeless, and very discouraged. They have sinned against the Lord. They lost the war to the Babylonians, and they are in bondage again. Verse 1, the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out of the Spirit, brought me out in the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by, all, pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered, covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Ezekiel is a prophet. As we've been talking about on Wednesday nights, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can come on a prophet and give the words and give the power to accomplish God's will. But the Holy Spirit does not go in the prophet. The Holy Spirit does not enter man until the day of Pentecost. 
And then he entered us and made us alive. The fullness of the new covenant. Jesus shed blood, his resurrection, and then the Holy Spirit given. And we are alive today in the Spirit. Nothing has changed in 2,000 years. So Ezekiel is prophesying about 500 B.C., maybe 600 B.C. Israel is discouraged, scattered, empty, hopeless. And while Ezekiel did prophesy to Israel while they were disobeying God and tried to warn them, this prophecy is for their comfort. This prophecy is to build them up. Have you ever felt scattered, dry, empty, abandoned? This prophecy would be for you too, even if you feel like that today. For God was not going to leave Israel scattered throughout pagan nations, some of them in Babylon, some of them in other cities, scattered by the enemy, forcefully scattered. He would not leave them that way. He would not leave them hopeless. He would not leave them dry. He tells his prophet Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones. Notice that God did not speak to the bones. God gave the instruction to Ezekiel to speak to the bones. So Ezekiel did. He commanded what the Lord said, prophesied to the bones, and within a short time, a, a, a clattering and, a, and a, the scattered bones began to come together and to line up perfectly. Does anyone know how many bones we have? Anybody taken anatomy lately? 206? Is that what y'all said? Perfect. Which are the harder bones to line up? The rib bones or the foot bones? Mildred Madney, which bones are harder to line up? The foot bones. That's exactly right. You've had it on both feet and ankles. You're not alone. Betty, you've had that boot on for a while. Others have had a boot on your foot. The bones lined up perfectly. The sinews, which is the tendons, came on. The flesh came on. The skin came on. But the bodies were empty. They were still dead. So God says to Ezekiel, prophesy again. Prophesy to the breath. Speak to the breath and tell the breath to come in to these bodies. So Ezekiel does. He prophesies to the breath. Come from the four winds, O breath. Breathe on these slain that they may live. And sure enough, the wind, the breath comes into their bodies and they stand up alive. And the Bible says it was an exceedingly great army. A huge army. A huge army means restoration, means power, means triumph, means victory. This is a, a, a vision given to Ezekiel to encourage Israel. Israel, you will be brought back together. New life will be breathed into you and you will once again be my people. You will be a nation not only scattered, you will be in Jerusalem, in Judea. You will be restored. This is all accomplished by the work of God, by the will of God. If someone were to show you a vision of your life, what would they show you right now? Is your life a valley of dry bones? Is your life a tree planted by the water, green and bearing fruit? Is your life right now a wandering sheep? Is your life right now a wise and faithful servant? Is your life right now a stubborn mule? Is your life right now a caring and good Samaritan? Is your life right now a maidservant looking to the face of her master, willing to serve? If God gave you a vision of your life, what would he show you?
the point of this message is that God works miracles in us every day in our spiritual life. I want to talk to you about the miracle of current. There's no projection, Beth, so thank you for being up there. The miracle of current. This whole vision to Ezekiel happened because the Spirit of the Lord caught up Ezekiel and took him to a valley with dry bones. If the Spirit of God hadn't done that, there'd be no vision, no encouragement for Israel, no connection. What I want to do with the word current, when I say current, what do you think of? Water current? Wind current, electrical current. I would like you to think about a Holy Spirit current in your soul. The flow, the, the fountain of eternal life in you that John talks about, that Jesus talked about through John to the woman at the well. The fountain that wells up in us to eternal life. That current our entire Christian life is dependent on that current. If you shut off that current, we die spiritually. We drop down and we become useless like the dry bones without the Holy Spirit. We might still look like a Christian, but there's no spiritual power, no effect, no change, no fruit. We have to have the Holy Spirit connected to us as God was connected to Ezekiel. God has things for us to do. He is the rider and we are the horse. He has the reins and we have the bridle. And he guides us. Current. Anybody been out in a boat lately in this pretty weather? I know we have some fishermen, fellas who've been out in the boat lately. Anybody been on the lake? Raise your hand, too. Jerry, canoe or regular boat? Kayak. Kayak, okay. You know about currents then. Richard, been out in your boat? Good. Where did Sammy get to? Sammy, you haven't been out in your boat yet? All right, all right, all right. You all run, except for Jerry's kayak, you have, you've got motors on your boat. You can go to where you go. I was raised in Massachusetts on Cape Cod. Cape Cod is shaped like an arm like that. And I was raised right here at the shoulder. And when I was growing up, we had a boat. I asked my dad, Dad, can we get a sailboat? Because I saw these sleek little sailboats, little windsurfers, not windsurfers, but uh, buddy, I forget what they're called, and you used to deal with, not, the huh? Hobie Cat, is that, it's, a, it's just a single sail on, it, but it had a little well in it like that big, you could put your feet in, a what? That's it, I haven't heard that name in a long time. A sunfish is a little sailboat, they're all over Cape Cod. They're small enough you could pack them in your trailer. The bigger sailboats you have to moor them and you go out to them. Well, when I, when I moved to Cape Cod at 10 years old, I didn't know how to sail. When I moved to Kentucky at 23 years old, I didn't know how to farm. Now I know how to do both. And you had to pay attention to both. My friend down the road had a sailboat. His dad had a beautiful, probably 15, 18 foot sailboat, two sails, mainsail and jib. And, and it just... For the, for the prayer room design team, they'll get a kick out of this because they know we're debating this back and forth. This boat was all wood and it was all varnished. Now the prayer room design team has learned that I like varnished wood. They're also learned that Donna Bryant likes painted woodwork. And so Donna and I are still debating this concept of what will the prayer room look like. But nonetheless, this boat, beautiful, varnished, marine varnish, two sail. He's teaching me how to sail. And you know what a sailboat depends on? What does it depend on? Mike's got it. Wind. Wind. 
So he takes me out, shows me now, when we catch the wind, the boom is going to be over here. We're going to go that way. Watch out. Be careful. I'll take the tiller. Okay, so we're out there. The wind comes, catches the mainsail, catches the jib, and there we go. Boat starts to tilt. I'm, whoa! Makes me nervous, but it's okay. You can capsize a boat, but you're supposed to not capsize it. We go sailing, and it's a beautiful line, beautiful day, beautiful boat. Now, this is cool. Then he says, now duck. So I duck. We're going to come about. What's that? So he slams the tiller one side. The boom comes flying across, and the sail's over this side. Oh, that was exciting. That was exhilarating. I'm glad I was below the boom. That boom will knock you out of the boat because it comes right across the wind, throws it across. And now we're tacking this way. You can't sail straight in the wind. You have to tack back and forth. So he taught me about sailing. I asked Dad and Mom, could we get a sailboat? So we got a little sailboat. It wasn't like that one, but it was a little one. And buddy, it wasn't a sunfish. I'm still disappointed to this day, but someday I may have one. And I went out sailing in my little boat, and we're sailing and sailing, and then the wind stops. The wind stops. The waves go down. Uh, we were on the, not on the ocean exactly, but you could get to the ocean from where we were. And it always had waves. No waves. No wind. No trolling motor on my boat. No backup motor on my boat. So I sit there. Sit there. When the wind dies down, what happens to the temperature? It goes up because the sun is beaming on you. And I'm sitting in my little sailboat with no wind. This is not fun. Can I make the wind come? No. There's not a thing I can do about it. So I sit there. I'm getting hungry. Nothing like going out in the water to get hungry. You talk about an appetite. I'll eat all my cheese and crackers, drink my whole Pepsi. Wind still hasn't come up yet. One of the most discouraging things is to be on the water in a sailboat with no wind. One of the most discouraging things in the Christian life is to be trying to follow Jesus, but no Holy Spirit. No Holy Spirit. This is really boring. This is really dead. Is there anything we can do about it? God, would you bring the wind? God, would you bring the Holy Spirit? Church, there's not a thing we can do without the Holy Spirit. And I, you know that. We read it in the Word. But I don't think we understand how connected we got to be. You can't run a single power tool without a battery or electric current from somewhere. You can't do it. Well, one of the most exciting things about sailing is when the wind comes back up. The sail just starts to waffle a little bit. Hey, the wind's up! Get ready! And then it starts to blow. You can position the boat so it'll catch it, and all of a sudden that big mainsail, boom, the wind catches it. The boat lunges forward, and you better hold on because it's ready to go. You better have that tiller. And then it catches the jib sail, and you're off again sailing. Boat tilted like that, and away you go. And everything comes to life. It's exciting. When the Holy Spirit fills our heart and fills the church, everything takes off. Every one of your gifts takes off, and you have a load of spiritual gifts. And it all starts to happen. And it's beautiful. It's exciting when it's happening. And it's boring when it's dead. I'm glad it's happening. Kayla's event yesterday was beautiful. She planned it well. God called her to help children at Cosair's Hospital. She testified to it publicly. Our state senator, Max Wise, gave a personal testimony of his faith in Christ, of his son's stage four cancer at six months old, and how healing was brought medically and spiritually. That event from a 17-year-old glorified God. I saw a number of you in different places yesterday, and I see you all week. If I was to tell stories, I could tell stories of you all all day long. And I told the early service the same thing. You all do a great job in ministry, connecting to people, bringing dry bones back to life. The miracle of current is when the Holy Spirit moves in us. You know, we could sing it, we could sing it right now, and y'all would know this song word for word. Now let us Gerald, that's a call to worship. If I go, now let us you sing, have a little talk with Jesus. 
Let us tell him all about our troubles. Hear our faintest cry. Answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer wheel turning, stop. What's a prayer wheel? What's a prayer wheel? The writer of that song caught this idea of current, of wind blowing, wheel turning, God moving. Caught it. Put it in the song. And you know a little fire is burning. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Prayer to our Lord makes it right. Starts that flow. That current begins to go. The, the winds from the four winds come and God fills us. And when we were down, we're back up. When we're discouraged, we're back confident. And the change happens. And it doesn't just happen to us once in our life. It happens all the time. We get tired spiritually and then we get refreshed spiritually. We get pressed down. We get pulled up and lifted up. Over and over. The second miracle in this message is the miracle of confidence. Israel was getting their confidence back from this prophecy from Ezekiel. You mean we really are going to stand again? Yes, Israel, you will stand again as a great nation. To Peter, who failed Jesus at the night of his trial, Jesus, can I ever serve you again? Yes, Peter, you can. Feed my lambs, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. I restore you. Who stood up on the day of Pentecost? Peter. And preached to his enemies. This Jesus whom you crucified, God has raised up. The miracle of confidence from the Holy Spirit. From being unconcerned about a situation to being personally involved. From being a negative thinker to having a positive attitude. To being anxious and afraid to being confident and bold. This is the change the Holy Spirit makes in us when that wind blows and catches our sails and sends us forward. It's very exciting. Very exciting. And the whole purpose of it is to enable communication, the miracle of communication. Ezekiel was God's communicator. God gave a message. Ezekiel spoke it to the bones. He spoke it to the breath. He spoke it to Israel. And they received encouragement. Peter, when he preached the gospel on the day of Pentecost, he communicated the truth about Jesus. This Jesus whom you killed, God has raised from the dead. And they were cut to the heart. What shall we do? And Peter says, repent of your sins and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The miracle of communication. Communication gathers people, gathers folks around Jesus, around the gospel, focuses on the gospel, and puts people together, builds them up in him. Let me share a few stories, and then I'll wrap up. As I talked to you about Kayla's event, Kayla's event was about communication. Here is a need that children have. Over 600 children have cancer in Kentucky every year. Cosayers Children's Hospital is one of the main hospitals that treats them and helps them. I didn't know it, but uh, Jeff Dunbar had been in, in Cosayers Hospital when he was a kid. Jeff told me that yesterday at this event. He'd done something, cut his fingers off, and they sewed him back on, and Jeff's fingers are still there. Kayla communicated to us the need through, through her her host, Chris, through her singer, Emily, through her own message, through Senator Max, through the invitation to give. She communicated a need and did it very, very well. And $3,500 was raised, and we gave as a church another $500. So $4,000 was raised for childhood cancer treatment and research. Hallelujah. Buddy, I'm just going to grab a mic. I'm a little gun shy on this one. So let me grab one of these mics, because if I get going, you all don't want a technical difficulty. Right out of this, whoa, sorry about that. A few ears just went boing. I may just come right out of here. Ricky, I may just run to you, jump over Nancy, and, and just jump the pews. Sandy will duck, and I'll be just fine. I've heard of that, you know. In Prestonsburg, there was someone, a revival preacher came in, and they ran the pews. 
I practiced that once when no one was around. It's doable, but you really have to be lit up. <laughs> I can't do it under normal circumstances. Barbara, if you ever run the pews, no, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't see you run the pews. Alan, I could see Alan running the pews, but maybe not Barbara. So if I get going on this message, if the wind continues to blow, then we have it. No, nothing hinders. Kayla's event went off beautifully because everything was in place. Everything. The keyboard wasn't there at 3.30, but the keyboard was there at 4 o'clock, just in time. Everything went off smoothly. You know what else I heard yesterday? Fred, when Lucy was telling me about her story, trying to host the group from Campbellsville, uh, Lucy Ann, I, I can't remember her last name or say it all, and I'm one to talk. She was going to lead a group of people from Campbellsville to Uganda to communicate the gospel by acts of service and by gospel preaching. They raised the money, bought the tickets, had everything set up, packed their luggage, went to the airport, checked their luggage. Calvin, everything was ready. They're ready to go to Uganda to communicate the gospel until the leader put his passport on the counter and the clerk saw it and said, your passport only has two months till it expires. You're required to have a passport that has at least six months of valid time on it. You can't go. <sighs> and the whole trip was canceled, right, Fred? They all stayed here. Nobody went to Uganda. The communication was stopped. I don't blame them. I didn't know you had to have six months on a passport. Some things we don't know. Some things we're not aware of. So we try to get completely ready. So there's no hindrance. Now maybe the timing, God will work at a better timing. But it put Lucy into a hard place for her academic. She's going to do some of her academic work. So we, we need that communication to be organized. And you know what hit me reading this, reading this scripture about the bones is the first thing that happened is that God, the scattered bones, leaders please hear this if you're a leader, in the church. The first thing that happened, the bones were organized. All 206 bones lined up. Then the tendons and then the flesh and then the skin. And lastly, the breath. For us to be organized, very well organized, helps so much in communicating the gospel. Beth, I want to tell a story on you. Yesterday at Adair County Primary Center, Beth carried out our first outreach project for this year. By outreach, I mean not here at Trinity and reaching children and youth that we don't normally reach. She brought some games. We had bought some Christian coloring books. She brought those. She brought our big cross and flame Bible school game that you all may have seen at Bible school. She had it all under a canopy at ACPC representing Jesus, representing Trinity to the children of that school. She was organized and the message was communicated. Hey, we love you. Make sure your patience with this because the end result, the fourth miracle, is the miracle of conversion. When Peter went from failure, that current began to flow as the Pentecost entered. His confidence came. He communicated the gospel. 3,000 families were converted. And Karen, you can you're, you're, keep, keep coming. Just make your way up. Bring your buddies with you. As we do fill my cup. Or maybe it's just you. I don't know. Conversion happens when we communicate the gospel. Most of you are already saved. So what happens here when we communicate the truth? The Holy Spirit has two ministries at least. One is to convict the sinner. The other is to refresh the body. To refresh the family of God. And I pray that He will refresh you today. Looking at this, this scripture. Hearing this message. Because it all leads to conversion. I went for a walk this morning. Jamie, tell your dad and mom I went for a walk this morning. I'm sure they had to go uh, maybe for uh, a funeral or a, a visitation. But I went over to the cemetery and I was praying this morning, breaking any negative thing against Trinity Church. 
And as Ezekiel had the authority to speak to the bones and to speak to the breath, the pastor has the authority to speak to the demonic and cancel it against a church. It's given by God. So I cancel any negative scheme against Trinity and ask the Holy Spirit to lead us. And I was just about to pray, Gerald, for more people to be drawn to Trinity, but you know the Holy Spirit wouldn't let me do that. It was selfish. Instead, he had me pray that people would come that are not in church, that would come to every genuine church in Adair County. So that's what I prayed. And I still selfishly wanted to pray, but God, what about... I could not name Trinity. He already knows. But to every genuine church in this county, there's, a, there's 20% of people in church today, and 80% of Adair County is not in church. We're going to go reach them, person by person. You all know them. Some of you have so many Facebook hits, I'm like, wow, you know a lot of people. Some of you know a lot of people anyway. We're going to go reach them. The miracle of conversion. I hope God has converted your heart again from flesh to spirit, from dead to life, from distant to close. If he hasn't, pray this song as Karen sings it. Sing it if you want. She's going to sing, Fill my cup, Lord. Fill my cup. The altar is open if anyone is in need of prayer.